So we're going to talk a little bit about Parkinson's disease. I have Matt Jensen here with us, a neurologist. And Matt, I thought maybe we could just start out. I have a little video clip, which I think is pretty cool, and goes through some of the symptoms. Do you mind if I just start with that? Hi, my name is Duncan. I'm age 55, and I've had Parkinson's now for 10 years. After I got diagnosed, one of the first things the doctor told me was to get exercise, get regular exercise. Parkinson's can, can interfere with the way you walk. Uh, my left leg will drag sometimes. My left hand has got a tremor to it. I will get stiff. And uh, so walking can be a challenge for me uh, sometimes. And, of course, as the illness progresses, it gets worse. I'm Steve. You know, when, when he's talking about all these symptoms, you know, he's talking about walking and this tremor in his hand, is this pretty typical for Parkinson's disease? Yeah, that's a very typical story. There are a kind of large number of symptoms, kind of the three biggies that we look for when we're uh, trying to decide on a diagnosis of Parkinson's disease is uh, first a tremor, which is very common, uh, kind of shaking movement of body parts like the hands that are involuntary. And then the next one is uh, slow movements. A person just can't move. When they do a movement, it's just not the normal speed. The movements get slower as the disease progresses. And then the third big one is a, is a, a kind of stiffness of the muscles. And patients often notice this as a feeling of stiffness. And then we particularly notice it when we're doing the physical examination of people with Parkinson's disease. We ask them to relax the muscles and then we move parts of their body and we feel this stiffness that's also involuntary. They're not trying to do that. Um, we, it seems to affect kind of the larger muscles, or at least it's more noticeable in the larger muscles um, early in the disease. And for instance, it often, like, the, like our patient here said, it often affects the walking quite a bit. And is that a separate symptom or is that basically just kind of these symptoms rolled into just walking? Yeah, it probably the slowness and the stiffness contribute to the trouble walking. And it also is probably somewhat separate that there are kind of areas in the nervous system that, that uh, tell our muscles how to do walking normally. And, and with Parkinson's disease, some of these areas are not functioning normally. So a person can't walk like they normally would. How do they walk usually? It's just like a slow walk or just they can't walk at all? It, it's slow, and mm -hmm. as the disease progresses, it gets slower and slower. They're often somewhat kind of stooped over, and they're often taking these short shuffling steps. And then they also uh, do develop some poor balance and become prone to falls, which becomes a real problem as the disease progresses because people can get injuries from falls. So when you say stooped over, like literally their back is stooped over? Yeah, kind of often the shoulders are kind of rounded and they're stooped over. And, you know, it's pretty common to see folks with Parkinson's disease walking around. So probably lots of people watching this have seen somebody walking by that's kind of slow and stooped and shuffling. And, and then often they'll have a tremor of their hands happening at the same time. So I usually think of walking as like, something that your legs do but the way you're describing it with like stooped over and you know uh, hands kind of shaking it's you're, you're kind of describing all of the movements that a body needs to do while it's walking right yeah walking is definitely a very complex thing and and the nervous system has to do a lot of work to try to organize all the muscles for walking. So what's causing all these problems in Parkinson's disease? I have the drawing, so obviously that's going to help us kind of talk through it. But do you mind just telling me exactly what the issue is in Parkinson's? Yeah. So you, you've drawn a very nice illustration of the brain. And we're, we're looking up at the brain from the bottom. Yeah. And right in the center there, you've drawn the brain stem where we've kind of cut through the brain stem to disconnect the brain from the spinal cord and then you've drawn that bigger over just to the right of that mm -hmm. and and that top image is a normal uh, brain stem the part of the brain stem that's involved with parkinson's disease and in particular those yeah and then the one underneath is a would be a typical one of parkinson's disease okay and and those black lines you've drawn are really the part that's affected in Parkinson's disease. Those black lines are called the substantia nigra, and the cells there are connected with uh, other parts of the brain that, that do all sorts of functions, but particularly a lot of movement functions. And in Parkinson's disease, those cells are lost. 
they're gradually uh, they gradually die over decades and just like you're drawing there we see way less of those cells in there mm -hmm. and why those cells are lost is the mystery we're actually not sure what the cause of Parkinson's disease is. Um, what is actually killing the cells is the big mystery. We actually do lose um, cells in other parts of the brain, and uh, they that turns out to contribute some symptoms, but usually much later in the course of the disease. Most of the kind of movement abnormalities that we see early in the disease seem to be related to these specific cells right here. So that, that makes sense. So these cells, we don't know why they're they're dying, but in people with Parkinson's, they're dying, and as a yep. result, they get these these problems that we saw in the first video. I'm going to play the second video because I think it's pretty cool, and I'm going to ask you what you think of it. I'm Steve, and I'm 67 years old, and I was diagnosed with Parkinson's nearly five and a half years ago. My uh, tremor is pretty obvious right at this point, but I've never demonstrated a tremor when I've been playing an instrument. before Gary but you know when we're talking <laughs> with Steve he's playing the instrument and it's really interesting right like you can literally like see the shaking you know as you go through there and then yeah. as he picks up yeah. the instrument it's just gone. Well there, there are a number of types of tremor there are a number of different kinds of tremor and conditions that cause tremor and they all look a little different and one of the things that's very distinctive about Parkinson's disease is uh, that it, it, it's what we call a rest tremor so it's actually when the body part is resting and the muscles are not contracting and there's no movement happening, that's when we see the worst tremor. And then it actually goes away when a person starts moving. Now, there are a number of other types of tremor that are exactly the opposite, where when a person's resting their body parts, there's no tremor, but when they try to move, they actually get a tremor. Um, why that is, we're not sure. Uh, you know, Because there's a lot we don't understand about how the wiring of this particular system is and how it, how it uh, both controls movements and kind of suppresses movements that you don't want to happen, like this tremor. That's really interesting. I, I'm going to play the final video then, and this one brings up, I think, a pretty interesting point as well. Let me play that. Hi, I'm Gary. I'm almost 74 years old. I was diagnosed with Parkinson's in February of 2008. I lost the ability to write a check. Many, many people don't realize that there's so many different symptoms that you get with Parkinson's. But my handwriting got smaller and smaller and unrecognizable. And one day I wrote a check and I, and I put the, I tore the check out of the book and put it on the, on the, on the table, my desk. The phone rang and I took the call. And after I, after I finished the call, I, put, I picked up the check and put it in an envelope and I looked at it and I couldn't read it. And that was very frustrating for me. That, that was that, that that was the day that I think I hit bottom. So, so that's actually pretty powerful. I mean, the idea that an everyday activity like like writing a check can, can be impossible with with these movements. I mean, are 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 people able to do things like brush their teeth or eat food with Parkinson's when when it gets that bad? Yeah, unfortunately, so early on, uh, Parkinson's is more annoying than disabling. A lot of the tremor is bothersome to people, and, and you know, they don't like a lot of the symptoms, but they're often able to do everything they were. But unfortunately, Parkinson's progresses. We're not sure why these cells are being lost, but they're, they, there's progressive loss to these cells, and people's symptoms get worse. And when Parkinson's gets severe, a person often isn't able to take care of themselves, and that's that can be very disabling. Yeah, wow. And, and you can see he had it on both sides, both arms. And the other, the other two gentlemen, it looked like it was just one arm. Is that because he's worse? Yeah, it's the these three people are interesting because they they show an important point that you know while Parkinson's patients often have all all of the symptoms. They often can have them in different patterns. With Parkinson's disease, we usually see uh, the symptoms come on on one side worse than the other. And then as it, as it gets more severe, we do tend to see people become more symmetric, where they're involved very similarly on both sides. Cool. Well, thank you so much for going over that with, with me, Matt. I really appreciate it. You're very welcome.